If you've ever had a chance to speak to an elite athlete, one thing they'll tell you about competing in their sport is that they don't want the highs to get too high and the lows too low. They try to keep their emotions in check in order to properly focus at the task at hand. Well, you'll have to excuse Craig Anderson if he wasn't able to do that last year. From the cancer diagnosis of wife Nicole to returning to the team with a shutout win in Edmonton to a long playoff run that saw them literally one shot away from the Stanley Cup Finals and finally to the news that Nicole was in remission, Anderson faced many emotions along the way. Their story is well documented, but being off for as much as he was last year, he got a different perspective of his wife and the life she leads while he and his teammates are on the road. You know, we take our, our family for granted sometimes. You know, our wives, when we're out playing hockey and doing our job, um, the little things that are done at home that the wife and takes care of and your, your other you know, brothers, sisters, family, whatever, grandparents come in. I think when you're, you're playing hockey all the time, you don't realize how much they do. And, um, you know, when I was there for the two months, you realized, wow, this is actually a lot more hard work than, than what they let you know. I mean, our wives are great as far as not, not bringing that stress onto us, allowing us to just be stress-free at home and go out and worry about, about our game. But uh, that was a, an eye-opener for me as far as they do a lot and we don't realize how much they do and they really, we really need to appreciate them more as, uh, as athletes. Being away from the team for as much as he was last year put both his mental and physical skills to the test when he did return. He came back, as mentioned, after a few days away and led the team to a shutout victory over the Edmonton Oilers. After taking a page out of Steve Merton and John Candy's playbook to get there, he knew his teammates had his back and would play well in front of him. You know, Hammond got, got hurt and then we kind of, uh, you know, full panic mode, flew back all the way out west, you know, planes, trains and automobiles to get back out there. And again, I think it was more of a mental battle at that point of making sure you're ready and, and didn't want the team down. You know, everyone knew there was lots of other, uh, I, you know, extracurricular stuff that was going on that you had to kind of put aside and I think we all kind of came together and the stars aligned for that game. Um, and then sitting for a couple months, coming back, we played uh, the Islanders here at home, kind of same situation. You know, you're, you're kind of in that ho-hum mode where you don't know if you're ready, but you kind of have to play, and you just kind of find a way to, to get the job done, and guys really rallied around that. He learned quite a bit about himself last year, but it was more of a mental challenge getting back between the pipes. Being out of shape and away from game action, he knew he had to just throw himself into the fire and get it all figured out. In the end, the team rallied around him and played some inspired hockey. I think uh, it was every season's kind of the ups and downs. Last year, I think I learned a lot more about myself and the game of hockey and, and what it means to be part of a team, uh, more so than any other year. And uh, From taking the time off and, and really uh, not having the time or the ability to, to train and then having to come back, step in, it was really a mental test more than anything else. I mean, the physical, you still have to kind of get yourself back in shape. That kind of comes as you play. But uh, the mentally, being mentally sharp was kind of what I had to learn how to do just a little bit better. Um, you know, you're in uncomfortable situations. You're, you're, you're not in shape. You're not, you know, you haven't been with the team for two months. And now you have to figure out how to do it. And that's just, uh, you know, great bunch of guys. The guys really rallied around it and, and made sure that we played well. And I was the recipient of some, some pretty good hockey down the stretch. How the Park Ridge, Illinois native became a goaltender is a familiar story for a lot of little brothers. His neighbor played hockey with his older brother, who's five years his senior. And since he was smaller, they stood him in front of the garage and peppered him with shots. He stuck with it and well, the rest is history. Uh, I was a kid, I tagged along, my neighbor played hockey, my brother was five years older, he played hockey with the neighbor, I kind of tagged along, too, too small to kind of play with them, so I stood in front of the garage door and let them shoot balls at me, so uh, it's just one of those things where we put a lot of, a lot of holes in the uh, garage door, there used to be a uh, you know, nice wooden garage door, Let's put a couple holes in that and um, you know, before you know it, if I wanted to tag along, I, I had to play goalie. As with any goaltender, a key member of the team is the goalie coach, but the good ones serve as more than a technical coach. They're able to read their players and help them when the going gets tough. Pierre Gru, the Sens goalie coach, really helped him keep his focus and doubled as a sounding board for Anderson when things might not have gone as planned. 
For me personally, I think, uh, you know, I need to have a goalie coach that I can vent to and know that it's kind of like a patient, you know, doctor confidentiality type thing where so you get, you get, sometimes you get caught up in the heat of the moment and they have to understand that you're not, you're just venting, you're not actually mad at anybody or anything like that. And it's just a, it's kind of a platform when you have a guy that, uh, Pure Girl's been great ever since uh, I had him in Florida, you know, 10 years ago. Um, you know, he, he really pays attention to not just the, the ability on the ice or the skills you're working on the ice, but he can tell if you're frustrated with, with a drill or frustrated with something and he'll pull you aside and you'll just, you know, you got a, a sounding board to kind of talk things out of maybe the drill, you, you know, physically or you can't do the maneuver that we want to do and maybe we have to change that or maybe there's something going on at home or something going on with, with another teammate that uh, he can just kind of listen give you advice and, and kind of make sure that your mind's in the right direction. Almost any goalie coach can go through the, um, the skills and be like, well, this is how you do X, Y, and Z. Um, the really good ones are able to do that, but also attend to your kind of mental needs as needed. Off the ice and outside of hockey, Craig Anderson is an automotive junkie. His father raced semi-professionally and that need for speed is in Anderson's blood. My dad raced um, part-time professionally back in the early 80s, um, did uh, some major events with, with uh, Corvettes and then GTP car uh, in the prototype series for the Le Mans cars a um, couple years, but it's kind of been in the family. We've always been around cars, Corvettes, race cars, you name it, we've been around it and um, pretty much ever since uh, high school I've been out it's at a garage, um, you know, for our, our family mechanics garage who's kind of held the race cars for us over the years and just being there being around the cars telling you know grabbing a wrench with them and just kind of being the apprentice uh, without really being an apprentice. <laughs>